All right, good morning. I'm Mayor Balderman. I want to thank uh, all of you for being here today. Um, this is uh, being recorded, obviously. We want to be able to get it out to people who uh, maybe were working this morning or had family obligations or just didn't want to get up at uh, 8 o'clock, like some of the people in this room, I'm sure, but we're willing to do it, uh, and we appreciate you doing that. Um, you know, we decided to have this little uh, informal informational session today uh, because personally as the mayor and I know you all see uh, what's happening uh, in the world today. We've become a, uh, a people who uh, are divided. There's people that are trying to uh, fight for our attention and our loyalties and uh, whether and it's not just at the government level. This is not just about politics. This is just in general um, and there are so many sources of quote unquote information out there uh, social media cable news networks uh, those sort of things um, and uh, Obviously a lot of it is driven by money. It's driven uh, by opinion. It's not factual and so here, as the mayor, uh, my concern is what's happening here in New Lenox. My obligation is what's happening right here in our community uh, with our people. Uh, what goes on beyond our borders, um, as a person, I'm interested in it, but as the mayor, my responsibility is within the borders of New Lenox and, and what happens here. Um, we are very fortunate to be served in this community by people who are willing to give of their time uh, to be on local boards. And here in the village, you know, we have the village of New Lenox, myself and, and our trustees. We've got our local grade school board. We've got our local high school board. There's a community college board that has larger boundaries, obviously, just like our high school board has a little bit bigger boundaries. And then uh, we've got our park district, our fire protection district, our library. Um, and then you have partisan boards, which are township boards and um, county boards. And then, of course, we have our state representatives, our federal representatives. So what I really wanted to focus on here today are the nonpartisanship positions, the nonpartisan boards, and that is those local boards that I talked about, our schools, our library, our parks, our fire protection, our village. We don't run as Republicans or Democrats or Green Party people, um, primarily because the issues that we're dealing with are community service issues. They're public service issues. Are your streets getting plowed? Are, is your community safe? Are your kids being educated? Are the library and the parks providing programs for students? Those are things that apply to everybody. It doesn't matter what your personal beliefs are politically. Everybody wants a kid to get a good education. Everybody wants to drive down a safe street. Everybody wants to have programs available to them and their kids. And so, that's the beautiful thing about local government, and that's why it really has a tendency to work and always has uh, better than the partisan governments because we're not answering to a party. We're not answering to big money. We're answering to our next door neighbor. We're answering to our friends our kids, friends, parents. That's who we answer to. That's who we're supposed to answer to. And so um, I think that's why it works so well. If you want to see your mayor, well, be on the walking trail at 530 in the morning or go to the Jewel when my wife tells me we ran out of milk. If you want to see your school board member or your library member, your park district member, you'll see them out at the ball field with their kids. And it's great, and you can interact with those people, and that's how it should be. Because we realize at the local level here, even though whether you're the President of the United States or the President of the Park Board, you're just a person. You're just a citizen that's elected to serve in that position. 
but, uh, but we don't lose sight of that here at the local level, and that's what's so good about it. That's, that's, that's the beauty of it, and that's why it works. So I wanted to talk a little bit about local government and what it can and can't do. And when we talk about misinformation and people putting things out there, I know when I'm going to host a meeting like this that the turnout is going to be low. And again, there are people who can't make it for, for various reasons, um, or people just choose not to make it. But if we had every resident in this room that took to social media to criticize what your local government or local boards are doing, we'd have to move it out to the commons area and it would look like the ZZ Top concert from the other night. The place would be packed. So I personally don't have a problem with criticism if it's based on factual information. I mean, that's the beauty of our country. We can agree to disagree, and that's wonderful. And there are a lot of decisions that have to be made at the local level, and some people like them and some people don't, and, and that's okay. Uh, we've hosted meetings uh, recently, development meetings, where we got 100 and some people here. I love it. I'd rather have 100 people in my boardroom asking questions than 100 people at home behind a computer typing, uh, you know, in their basement. Okay? We had a... A uh, wastewater treatment plant meeting that we had to have Lincoln Way open up Lincoln Way West for us that had 600, 700, 800 people attend. Love it. I love it. Because I know, and our local school board and park district board and library board, all those boards know that they want you to be informed. We want to give you the information. There is, this isn't a... Uh, you know, some Netflix movie where there's all kind of conspiracies happening behind the scenes. We do our business out in public. We do it out in front of you. And if you watch, Channel 6 does a great job of, of televising board meetings. Uh, they're open to the public. Their agendas are out there publicly so you know what's going to be discussed. Boards can't take action on items unless they're posted on an agenda at least 48 hours ahead of time. There's no secrecy. There's no conspiracies. These are your neighbors that were either kind enough or foolish enough to put their name on a ballot and uh, be willing to serve. And um, you should ask questions. You should participate. You should be informed. Again, as the mayor of this town, I know the more informed you are of what's really happening, the better off we all are. So are the people who take the social media to complain, and I'm not talking about asking questions. Asking questions are great. Are the people who take the social media to complain really interested in getting the information? Or are they just attention seeking or they had a bad day and they want to rip into somebody or, or whatever? I don't know. I'm sure there's a, a whole uh, laundry list of reasons why people do what they do. But this is just another opportunity to say, come on out and learn, if you're truly interested in coming out and learning. Now, we have representatives from those local boards here. They took the time of their Saturday morning to be here. And this was not a panel discussion, but they're here anyway, just in case somebody had a question they wanted to ask. Now, also, today is not the day to talk about specific items. That's the beauty of having public meetings. If you have an issue, of course, there are big issues that rage right now about the village. Is the village going to uh, put another mask ordinance out there? Is the school district going to have kids in masks? Go to the local school board and ask. This is to explain to you why we do what we do and why we make the decisions that we make. And it's also to ask you especially for those, hopefully, that will be watching, how you can get involved. None of us who are on these boards should want to keep people away from getting involved. We should encourage people whose sole mission is to make their community better to run for boards. How great would it be if you had a, a big, long list of people that you could choose from 
that are running for office if they all were just concerned about doing what's best for their community? Then you can't lose. Then you cannot lose. Because really, at the end of the day, that's all this is. At the village, we deal the most with passing laws, which are our ordinances. But I'm going to tell you, we don't pass laws on right to life or right to choose. We don't pass laws on whether you can bear arms. We don't pass laws on capital punishment. So you don't, what my personal views are politically are irrelevant, again, because what it comes to is community service. With the exception, I believe, that all of us should want people who represent us that are concerned about our tax dollars. When we live in Illinois, it's a problem. Property taxes are a problem. So I will jump off there. And then before we done, we're done, I want to talk about how you can get involved and what you should do. So we've got a, a tax bill here. Bad information. I love when I read, I don't live in the village. I live in unincorporated because the taxes are too high in the village. Well, that's not a reason not to live in the village. Because if you look at a village, if this is a tax bill for somebody who lives in the village of New Lenox. If you live in the unincorporated area of New Lenox, your tax bill is exactly the same with the exception of these two lines, village of New Lenox and village New Lenox roads and bridges. That's it which makes up about four cents on the dollar. So if your taxes are $10,000 and now we're rebating 85% of your local taxes back to you, the village portion of the taxes, that means the difference between living in the village of New Lenox and living in the unincorporated area is about $60 out of 10,000. So when people say, oh, the taxes are too high in the village, no, it has nothing to do with it. Your taxes are based on your assessed value of your home, what people think your home is worth, So, what the, the assessor thinks your home is worth. So if your home is worth 400,000, it's assessed for 400,000 in unincorporated, it's assessed for 400,000 in the village, your difference is four cents on the dollar. That's it. Now, where people, where it could get a little more expensive if you wanted to move in is now if you need to have sidewalks put in and water brought to you and that sort of thing. And so if you make that decision for whatever reason, then okay. But when anytime I hear people say, well, that's why I purposely live in unincorporated so I don't have to pay the high taxes, that's wrong. That's completely wrong. So have a look at your tax bill. It's no secret that in Illinois, for the most part, about 65 to 70 percent of your taxes go to schools. Grade schools, high schools, college. That's where the, the bulk of your taxes go. And so people get upset. Why does it cost me so much for schools? I don't even have kids in schools. Well, if you live in this community, your home is worth more money because we've got outstanding schools. So yes, you're going to pay a little bit more. But why does so much of your tax bill go to schools? Well, you're in the wrong room for that. You'd have to go to the state because the state has a constitutional obligation to pay the majority of public education in Illinois, which would be 50.1%. I think our New Lenox grade school district might get 10% or 12% from the state. Imagine if they were living up to their obligation and paying 50% of public education to 122, to 210 for our colleges, our public colleges. Imagine if they were paying their 50%. Your tax will be, bill would be a heck of a lot lower. The state also does a thing called unfunded mandates. You've all heard that term before, and that affects all of us, whether, come on, folks, whether you're at the village, you're at the school, doesn't matter. Something will happen, and some legislator will decide to pass a piece of legislation, some knee-jerk legislation, that then will impact all of your local governmental bodies, meaning they have to have more training, and it costs them more money. And it, well, the state doesn't pay for it, so who pays for it? 
You do. The taxpayers do. And that's how those things work. So it's important that you get to know how local government works and why it works the way it does. I'll talk about our park district for a moment. People like to say, why don't we have a community pool? Why don't we have a dog park? They got a dog park next door, you know, in the next town. How come we don't have one? Well, we have services that they may not have. I mean, you can always cherry pick what people do. Well, the park district ran a referendum a few years back once the bonds were paid off for the golf course and said to the people, if you leave the tax rate where it's at, we're not going to raise it. We're done paying our bonds. We'll have that excess money. That's maybe where you can build a dog park or a community center or whatever that they chose to do. And the referendum failed. And that's fine. And that's democracy. People have a right to do what they want to do with their taxes. But that took a lot of opportunity away for the park district to be able to provide those services. And they do a great job as it is. But they also rely on things called Auslan grants, which are hard to come by that come from the state. And, and they try, they're out there working very, very diligently, as all the taxing bodies are, to try and get their hands on some of that grant money to provide services. But if they don't get that, it's incumbent upon the taxpayers to pay for those services. So you can't say in one breath, my taxes are too high, but build me a pool, build me a, a dog park, um, have 18 kids in a classroom instead of 27. You know, mayor, build a, a bigger concert stage, build a whatever. It doesn't matter. You can't do that because you get stuck paying the bill. So you can't say, I want, I want, but don't charge me. And so that's where you can question your local officials, but are you spending your tax dollars wisely? Could you spend them somewhere else? Could you do something different? Well, if you think that your boards are not doing it wisely, then get involved and run, and run for office. And quite often I've seen, in the 20 years that I've been an elected official in this town, four as a trustee, two as a, a school board president at 122, and then 14 as mayor, people who were gonna run and change the way things are done and then they get on the board and they're like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I guess I can't do that. Oh, now I see. And then, they, then they're no longer on social media criticizing. They're on social media saying, no, 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 you don't understand. You don't understand. So again, I don't, people can do whatever they want on social media. I got to a point where I, it doesn't matter. But I, but I do want people to be informed. I do want people to know. So again, there's, there's a copy of your tax, uh, of a tax bill, a typical tax bill, and you can see where your, where your dollars are going, but they don't, they don't go very far when streets have got to re be replaced every 20 years. That's the, that's the long, uh, length or the, uh, how long a street will last. Uh, when new people move into the community and, and schools have got to be built or programs have got to be provided at the library or the park district, or the fire protection district has to try and keep a station open. And you bring a hospital in, which is outstanding for our community, but that puts a lot of uh, wear and tear on our services. So um, that's, people need to know that we're stretched pretty thin here. And again, it's, it's easy to come and bash on our state government or our federal government. I'm not interested in doing that either, but in reality, in this state, we've got a lot of problems when it comes to property taxes, and we pay the brunt of it at the local level. And it becomes incumbent upon you to pay for all of these services. So if you want, it's going to cost you. Um, I'll, I'll tell you that, just to go over uh, a couple of things. <clears throat> people, uh, I, I personally believe um, in people's right to their property. and so. Someone will say, well, Mayor, how come we don't have a nice town, downtown area like our neighbors? Well, we've got this beautiful commons area, and there's a lot of, there's 18 acres next to it that the village has a plan for that would be just like that. It would have a walking component. It would have shops. It would have restaurants. It would be beautiful. And we went to the property owner, and we offered to, we, we got them involved in our plan. They liked our plan. 
Uh, we went and had an appraisal done for the property of what it was worth because we're spending your taxpayer money to buy it. We made an offer to the landowner. The landowner didn't want it. We said, okay, give us a counter offer, and we never heard back. And they just have not been interested in selling these 18 acres. That would be beautiful for an area for us to do those things. So could we as a village say, well, we're going to go eminent domain, we're going to go after that property and take that property from that person and uh, go to court and let the court say, well, what's it, gonna, what's it worth and go ahead, village, and pay them. I, as long as I'm the mayor, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in taking people's personal property unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, for example, if you needed to provide water or sewer treatment plants, something along those lines, something that's vital to that. Having a nice downtown area or a nice area like that is, is beautiful. But I don't believe in taking someone's property from them just because we want to have some restaurants and shops over there. So that's not, I, I don't feel that way. The board doesn't feel that way, and we don't do that. Um, also, when it comes to vacant properties, we hear a lot about why is, why is the village allowing somebody to build a new business from the ground up when there's empty stores? Well, we, first of all, we can't tell someone, well, no, you can't build there, you have to build over here. Second of all, there are some empty stores in every community. And, and not just because of COVID, some have been empty for a long time. And I can tell you that in some of them, the property owners are asking an awful lot of money that people are not willing to pay. And, um, and it, quite honestly, it's, it might not be worth, it certainly wouldn't appraise at what they're asking for. There's a lot of interest in those empty buildings, but if someone wants a million dollars for something that's worth $400,000, the village can't tell them they have to sell it for $400,000. Hey, we got people interested, you have to sell it. They have a right. If you want to put your house on the market for $4 million today, I can't tell you you can't. It'll never sell, but I can't tell you that it can't. Nor do you want a government that has that kind of authority that, can, that tells you that you have to do something like that. So if people get angry and saying, uh, you know, why is the Pizza Hut building empty or TJ's has been empty forever? Yeah, there's been a lot of interest in both of those buildings. But I can't force those people to sell. We bring people to them. We say they're interested. Can you negotiate a price? Is there something we can do? But at the end of the day, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Why is the Kmart empty? Well, we've had a half dozen uh, truck stops come to us and want to put a truck stop up at the Kmart. How's that working out for you? I don't think so. So we've said no. We're not going to allow that to come there. It's not, it's not good for our community. That's not what we want. We are working with a couple of other groups that want to go in there, but there are Kmarts empty throughout the country. And so when you talk to corporate people who own the Kmart, they know where New Lenox is as much as they know where Mars is. So they don't care. They'll get to it when they get to it. And so it's not that we're not pushing for it to be developed, but it's got to be the right development. If you look from Nelson Road to Galger Road, from Haven to Illinois Highway, we have had people come and want to turn that into industrial, just like on the other side uh, where Cherry Hill Business Park is. That could have been developed tremendously. And it would have been, from a tax dollar standpoint, Great for Union School District, where I'm the superintendent, and 122 because it's split over there, because it'd be all tax dollars with no kids. But there's no way that we're going to have trucks and trucking terminals across the street from Homes on Haven, or across the streets from uh, the Homes off Nelson, or across the street from Lincoln Way West High School. It's not going to happen. Those are the decisions that we make. So there's a lot that goes into what we're doing and why we're doing it. And it it's real easy just to type away at how horrible everything is, but you need to get involved. Another thing that we hear is water bills. Our water's too expensive. There's no profit in village water. No profit. We're not making money off of village water. 
it's expensive. It's expensive to have Lake Michigan water, which came in here in 2001. I lived here for seven years prior to that and was going over and buying my salt pellets like everybody else and having to replace my washing machine and my dishwasher because it was rusted out. And, and it, but some people like um, their well water, and that's fine. But here, the village decided to go to Lake Michigan water, and that's expensive. And right now, we're in the middle of a project that's over $200 million that runs a redundant water line because we get our water from Chicago. So it goes Chicago to Oak Lawn to Tinley and out to us. We're at the end of the line. And we're the community that's gonna be growing more than anyone else, so it's most expensive for us. The water has to travel the furthest to us and our town is growing more than Oak Lawn's on that system. They're landlocked, their population is done. You know, Chicago Ridge is on that system. They're landlocked, they're, they're, they're done. So as it goes through, of course, as a community continues to grow and you're at the furthest end of the line, it's gonna cost the most money. Now, we don't owe that 200 million, 220 million, uh, but our portion of it's about $27 million to run that redundant water line. We have to build a new wastewater treatment plant. The one that's in the middle of the town that everybody complains about the smell of is at capacity. And our public works has done a good job of, of taking care of that for the most part. Still, every once in a while, you're gonna get it. Um, and the one that's in a residential neighborhood that a lot of people didn't even know was in a residential neighborhood um, off Laraway in Jackson Branch is nearly a capacity. So the EPA said, you either have to spend millions and millions of dollars upgrading these or you can build a new plant. So we're building a new wastewater treatment plant. I mean, that's in excess of $100 million, but you need it. I mean, people want clean water and they want to be able to go to the bathroom. So those are the things we do. So when you say, why is my water bill, my water and sewer bill so high? That's why. It's not because we want more money. We don't make any money off of that. That's just user fees and costs. That's it. Your local governments are not in the profit-making business. Schools aren't making money. Park districts aren't making money. Libraries aren't making money. It's just a matter of trying to find enough money to provide the services. I moved out here in um, 1994. And there were 10,000 people. There's now over 30,000 people in the incorporated section of the village. Why did I move out here? For the same reason that a lot of people who are not lifers here moved out here, because of good schools, good parks, good amenities, all of those things are here. But they cost money as you grow. Yes, it does, it costs money. When someone says, well boy, I lived in Worth and my taxes were only $4,000 a year. Okay, there's nothing wrong with Worth if that's where you wanna live, but you purposely chose to live out here knowing this was a, gro a growing community and it was gonna cost you money for that. So, um, Another thing that's important that we hear is, and, I, and again, speaking primarily about the village, why does the village allow this to happen? We had um, a, women's, a women's march that took place here in the Commons. We had a young high school girl that organized, as she called it, a Black Lives Matter march, but she wasn't affiliated with any group. That's just, she was a, a young high school girl that cared about her community. And we ended up having a thousand people out here. And I cannot tell you how many people contacted me and told me how horrible it was that I allowed that to happen in our community. And I like to say, well, I didn't allow it. James Madison allowed it. It's called the Constitution. People have a right to gather and to assemble peacefully. And as long as I'm the mayor, I don't care what their issue is, they will have that right to assemble peacefully here in our village commons, regardless of their position. Just like I got phone calls from other people who said that I should have fired an employee that was in Washington on January 6th. Well, I can tell you, if that employee would have breached the Capitol, they would have been fired, but they didn't. They were in the Capitol grounds where everybody had a right to assemble, didn't participate 
to the best of my knowledge or that anyone told me in anything illegal other than exercising their First Amendment rights. Again, it doesn't matter what my personal opinion is of either thing. My personal opinion is no more important than anyone else's personal opinion. But as long as I'm the mayor, we're going to support people's constitutional rights, and that includes the right to assemble and free speech. Not just the speech I like, not just the speech I agree with, not just the assembly that I want to take part in. And that's what we do here. And that's why, to me, local government works because we keep that out of it. We keep our focus on providing public service. Right now, all the rage, of course, is should kids be wearing masks in schools? Again, you can have whatever opinion you want on Facebook, but why don't you go sit up on the dais and make that decision? When you know how passionate people are on both sides of that issue, and no matter what you do, you're a horrible person. No matter what you do. I will also tell you that if the state mandates and they haven't as of yet, but if the state mandates that kids will be wearing masks in school and you get mad at your local school board because they go along with that mandate, well, you don't understand the ramifications of what can happen if they don't. You worry about your tax bill, what about if the state says, okay, no state funding for you? Nothing. Or we're gonna come in and take over your school district because we've deemed that you're not a credible school district anymore. Anybody want to stay taking over anything? I don't think so. They can't handle what they have. I certainly don't want them meddling in our affairs. So, please, please, be involved. Be engaged. Go to meetings. State your opinion. Run for boards. Get involved. But know what you're talking about, because what ends up happening, we're all human. You know, I, I'm the mayor of this town, but I can assure you that I like to spend as much time as I can with my kids and my grandkids. And you get to a point, and I'm not just talking about me, but anyone who's involved in the, these local politics get to a point where you just get bashed and bashed, like, you know what, forget it. Forget it, I'm out. I'll give it to somebody else that maybe has an agenda. And then as a community, we lose. As a community, we lose. That doesn't mean stay silent. It means be informed and get involved and then voice your opinion. And I think that's really, really critical. So how can you get involved? It's real simple. I have appointed people um, to commissions and boards. We have a new trustee here. I didn't ask this trustee what her particular politics were. I didn't care. What I knew about this person was that she was very active in her community. She helped the special rec center. She got, came to me and said, Mayor, how can we get a stop sign for our town? Took over a homeowner association. She got involved in her community. She asked questions and then she said, Mayor, if there's ever an opportunity for me to be involved, I'd like to be involved. Somebody bailed on us, left, left the state. Um, <laughs> So there was an opening. I, had, I, I have appointed people to commissions and, um, that I don't know. They just want to get involved. I ask them what their intent is, why they want to be involved. They get appointed. You can ask the people who serve on our plan commission, who serve on our police and fire commission. I don't ever call them. I don't call them. It's not my job as the mayor to call somebody on an, in an appointed commission and say, hey, I'd like you to vote a certain way or do something. They're off to do their job. Our board members will tell you, I don't call them if there's an issue coming up. Hey, can you vote a certain way? Can you do? I don't care. They can do whatever they want. They were elected by the people. It's not my village as the mayor to dictate what happens. It's your job as citizens 
to elect the people that you think are going to do the right job and then let them do that. I have served on boards before where people have said to me, well, why are you letting that person talk so much? Well, they got elected. Who am I to stifle their voice? If they say something that you find particularly offensive or foolish, then don't vote for them in the next election. That's what this is about. We have to stop. We have to stop looking for a side to belong to. Now, I understand. When you talk about legislation that's happening at um, the state level and the, and the national level, you, okay. You want to vote for somebody that feels the way that you do and you want them to represent you that way uh, at that level of government. That's great. That's great. The shame is after the election, they don't get together and work. They still do this, but that's a whole other topic. But not here at the local government. This is an opportunity for all of you to be involved. You don't have to have a particular skill set, as Liam Neeson says. You can just be a community member that cares about their town, that cares about their schools, that cares about their library, cares about their parks, their fire protection. Just get involved. You don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to belong to a political party. You don't have to do any of those things. You just have to be a good person that cares about their town, and you will be successful. You will be successful, and our community will be successful. And so really that's uh, what I wanted to, to tell you today. That's what I want, the point I wanted to get across. Uh, go to your, your local meetings, your local board meetings, ask questions. This is your community. We know that you're busy. We know that you're either raising a family or, or working two or three jobs to pay your bills. We get it. It's not for everybody. Not everybody has the time to make uh, to, or they just feel like it's not for them. And that's okay. That's all right. But it doesn't take anything special other than caring about your community to get involved. And so we want you to do that. So I'm happy to answer any uh, questions um, that you have. Again, if it's uh, specific issues, I'm happy to answer it. We do have representatives from, from other boards here uh, that you can ask. But again, uh, when it comes to specific topics, what are you going to do about, uh, the, again, a village I'm happy to answer, but that's the, really the more appropriate venue for that is at their board meetings or email um, those board members or those uh, department heads uh, of those places. Uh, but I'm really, I'm happy to answer any questions. I do get another one too um, with growth. I, I have to touch on this because I thought about it. It used to be, why do we have so many mattress stores? Well, now we only, well, now we only have one, so that doesn't, someone still throws it out there every once in a while, but we only have one. And our neighbors had more than us, even though we have a bigger population, but who cares? We're down to one. Now, why do you have so many gas stations? Well, number one, this is America. People own property. They have a right to sell their property. People have a right to develop their property. Um, I can assure you that what we do as a village, if there's some opposition to a particular um, business that comes in, and most of the time it's by the people who live right there and nobody else cares. Uh, but I get it. That doesn't mean the people who live right there don't have legitimate concerns. And so our job is to hear what those legitimate concerns are and say, okay, how can we make this work by addressing those concerns? And that's what I think we do very well. At the end of the day, the people who live right there may still not like it, but at least we know we did things to compromise to make sure that we addressed the issues that truly affect them. If it's just I don't like it, then I don't like it. I can't help that. I, you know, I lived in Bluestone. Um, before Target and Lowe's was built. I was, and I was on a village board. And Joliet Highway didn't used to go through, so you never used to drive behind Target and Lowe's. I know the people who've lived there for a long time know that, uh, but a lot of people would never believe that. Well, when Target Lowe's was up for a vote, my neighbor said to me, you know, uh, you better not vote for that. You better not vote for that. It's gonna impact us and that. And um, one of them, who shall remain nameless, said, uh, if you vote for that, we're moving. I said, well, I'm definitely voting for it now. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but um, 
And I did vote for it. And even at the time, there was enough votes I didn't have to vote for. I could have voted no and it still would have passed. But it was the right thing to do for our community to vote for that. Um, so, but the board tried to find ways to compromise to make it work for everyone in that community. And that's what we do. And so, um, you know, why are there a lot of gas stations? Well, if you go down Route 30, you'll notice there's pretty high medians. You can't just turn wherever you want, north and south, um, you know, off Route 30. So the, the new Casey's, which is more than a uh, gas station that has taco pizza as well, it's a convenience store, um, is, uh, is if you look, if you go from the Murphy Oil, which is by Walmart, then you'll have the Casey's. The next gas station on the north side of Route 30, I think is, I don't know, several miles down the road. And so people say, oh, you just go to one across the street. We all know what it's like crossing Route 30 off a side street. It's not easy. It's not easy. And the same thing goes for uh, the Lenny's Food and Fuel. I can't believe when I have people saying to me, you're going to tear down the Wallona? when all I got was complaints about the Wallona. <laughs> the home that was unincorporated until just recently, that was across the street where the, uh, from Walmart where the Arby's is going. My understanding is in the 60s and 70s, whatever, that was a beautiful home. I could see where it would be a beautiful home. But obviously over several years it had fallen into disrepair. It was boarded up, it was, had graffiti all over it. It wasn't in the village, so there wasn't anything that we could have done about it. It was boarded up, had graffiti all over it, and people were in there partying and doing whatever. And so when it got torn down for development, people said, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. Okay. Listen, there are some beautiful old homes in this town that we have zero interest in ever seeing go away. But if something falls into disrepair, if something's not taken care of, if something is an eyesore, if something is a, a source of multiple, multiple legitimate complaints, well, then you can't be upset when progress happens. People say, we don't want to be the next Orland. Okay. Well, one of the things I'm most proud of as mayor is bringing Silver Cross Hospital into this community. That was originally slated to be 2 million square feet of retail. We thought, as a board, that the hospital was better for our community. But I can't tell you how many people said, oh, how horrible. You're losing sales tax dollars for a hospital. Now look at it. It's more than just Silver Cross Hospital. It's got Lurie's Children's Hospital in there. It's got that cancer center. It's got a rehabilitation hospital. In my opinion, it's the best thing that ever happened to this town as far as development goes. People don't have to travel downtown to visit a loved one that's sick or a child that needs care. But I can assure you, I had to go to Springfield and argue before the Certificate of Need Board to get that hospital in. And I had people fighting with me about it in our town. When the mental health hospital was built, I had people arguing with me. We don't want that in that town. We don't have mental health issues in this town? I can assure you we do. <laughs> we want that here. We don't bury our head in the sand. We want services provided here. My goal is for you not to have to leave our community for the things that matter most. We've already got the basics down. We've got great schools. We've got great parks. We've got great library. We've got a great fire protection district. We've got great things happening in our community. We do. But. There are certain aspects that our board feels we don't need. You know, people say, we need things, more things for kids. Well, of course, I'd, I'd love to see more things for kids. But have a look at what's happening in these communities that have these big 
air thing and everything else. You got the police going there every day for big fights. So my thing is, we got great park district programs. There's great things for kids to do. If you want to go do that, go to that community. And when the police get called, come on home. <laughs> when New Lenox was voted the most boring town in Illinois, I couldn't have been more proud. <laughs> I mean, I think they're crazy. I mean, we put on some of the best concerts. We've got so many great things to do. But, but if excitement means, if excitement means trouble, no thanks. No thanks. Go do that somewhere else and come home to the most boring town in Illinois. I love coming home to the most boring town in Illinois. I mean, it, it's what we want. It's what we need, in my opinion. But um, so... There's a lot, again, just wrapping this up, there's a lot that goes into what we do with these local boards. There's a, the, the decisions that are made, um, but it's all done at the light of day. Doesn't matter what board we're talking about. There's no backroom deals, it's done at board meetings. Go, take the time, go. If you can't make it, watch it on channel six. Watch it on their um, website if they have it on YouTube or whatever they have, wherever their link is. Get involved, ask the questions. And if you are on social media and you have a good question, that's great. I see some great questions on social media. I see some great communication back and forth. There are some positives to social media. But please, just like I say, if you're getting your information from Facebook, if you're getting your information from Fox News or CNN or MSNBC, you're making a mistake. Go to the people who are doing it. Those are opinion pieces all. That's all that is. You can find all kind of opinion, and you can certainly find someone that has the same opinion as you. And finally, just be kind to each other. Just be compassionate. Be good to each other. This is a great town. I love this town. I love what the people do in this town. I'm grateful for the people who are willing to serve our community. They take a, a lot of grief for no compensation, and um, they're awesome people that are willing to be involved. There's a lot of great people in this town. Don't be afraid to step up. All right, that's all I've got. Who's got questions? Yes, sir. Uh, what is the participation rate? Are there a lot of openings on these boards? Is there low attendance, or what? Because that was part of this meeting. Sure, great. Well, well, there's a lot of things that sparked this meeting. You know I me, mean? sometimes I am too brutally honest, but, um, you know, I... I I hear about um, a couple things sparked this meeting. Number one, of course, I always see things on social media about our community that are not correct. And they get people fired up. I'm like, boy, I just, but I can't be out there every day. I try to respond the best I can on social media to things, and, and others do a good job to set the record straight. But like, now let's give people an opportunity to come and really find out what it's about. Um, and then I hear things about, uh, and this happens in a lot of towns, um, you know, we need partisanship at the local level. No, we don't. No, we don't. You can believe whatever you want personally, and that's great. But that's not what this local level thing is about. And I really want to stress that, that this is important. We don't, and I don't care what party it is. That's not what we need infiltrating local boards. That's not what this is about. This is about community service. As far as availability, yes, Every two years, you will have village board members uh, up or school board members or park district or library every two years. Uh, they're four-year terms, but they're staggered. Um, so like in 2023, uh, I'm up and three of our board members are up and you'll have board members from the schools and the library and the park, they're up. So you, get, you have an opportunity to run. It's real simple. Um, it's based on you have to get, you have to go circulate a petition and you have to get between five and 8% uh, signatures of the, of the people that voted in the last election. Typically, of course, if, if you're a trustee that follows a mayor's election, there's more people in, in those elections. But I mean, you're talking about you have to go get 100 signatures or at school board, I think you have to get 50 signatures to get on a, that's nothing. Go ask 50 of your friends, you know? Uh, so you can, that's all you have to do. Um, Participation at board meetings is minimal, and it's a shame. I mean, again, I get it. 
People work hard all day. They got to come home. They got to help do the help their kids with homework. Get them shower. Get to bed. Not everyone can go run to a board meeting. I get it. Typically, you only see people attend board meetings when there's an issue, when they have an issue, and that's okay. But if you have an opportunity to go attend any one of these meetings, library, park, school, village, it doesn't matter. Do it. You just to get informed. But attendance is really very low unless there's a specific issue. Again, I'll, I'll reiterate, we want people at the meetings. I really feel if people watched every, it would be a boring life, but if you watched every <laughs> village board meeting and school board meeting and you came to a park meeting, library, whatever it was, you, you watch them or you come to them, you'd say, okay, now I get it. Now, now I, and especially in this town, now I feel like I'm being well represented and, and my tax dollars are being spent wisely. You might not agree with every decision, but you would understand exactly how things are done and why they're done. But it's really simple to attend. Anyone can attend. You can speak. Anyone can speak. And anyone can run as long as you're 18 or older. And now in Illinois, I think you can even be a felon and run, so it doesn't really matter anymore. So, sir, I won't ask you your background, but I'm just telling you you're probably okay. So yeah, you, yeah, it doesn't take much, and we need you. We need you. I mean, I looked at the village board. I'm 55 years old. Um, and me and another board member are 55. Until we appoint a terror, we're the youngest people on our board. There's a lot of young people that live in this community, raising families. I don't want to be mayor forever. Our board members don't want to be there forever. And it's not just about your age. You can be older, but if you were never involved, get involved for the first time. It doesn't matter. We need representation from everybody. But we really need good people to get involved. We do. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Anyone else have a question about anything? Yes, ma'am. Um, you said in 2023 there's seats up. Yes. When you said to get the signatures. Mm -hmm. So what is the time frame Great. to get those signatures to be on the 2023? Great, great question. So for municipal elections, typically those packets go out like in September. And you can get to, you can call the village clerk about all that information, even um, about the other boards, they all go out at the same time. So they go out in September, they're due back around the end of December. So, you know, you have those three months, whatever, to uh, go out and get 50 signatures or 100 signatures or the worst case scenario, I think, uh, following our, the mayor's election might be 200 signatures or something. Uh, and there's a packet of information you have to fill out, but it's very minimal. Um, and uh, then you turn it in, then the, then the election's in April. So, yeah, you've got that September to December to get your paperwork done, which is very easy. Doesn't cost you any money. It, if you choose to uh, buy signs or something, you can do that. But you don't have to spend a dime if you don't want to. Um, and you can run for office. Yeah. Yes. You just to add to that, the Will County Clerk's website, and then it also redirects to some Illinois State websites, really details out the timeline for that. Mm -hmm. So the specific dates, and the deadlines, and the openings, and whatnot. So as it gets closer to that election, usually like the fall before, you can go to that and see the specific timeline. For sure, yeah. Like Michelle said, and for those who are watching at home, um, the Will County website has that information. But again, honestly, you could pick up, if, depending on what you're interested in running for, you can pick up in the phone and call that entity, the schools, the library, the village, the parks, it doesn't matter. You can call there and say, hey, I'm interested in getting involved, you know, when's the next election? Uh, you can see on the website who's up for office and, and when they're up. And, and, uh, but the terms around here are typically their four-year terms for those spots and six for, for libraries. So I said they're a six for junior college. But village, parks, schools um, are four-year terms and then you do get some six. And, and the shame of that is, and I would suspect that the reason, be, and I don't know this to be a fact, but a lot of towns you will see, you don't even get enough people to run. Now, we typically don't have that problem here. It does happen here every once in a while where you've got three people running for four seats or something. That's a shame. And 30,000 people that we can't get four people that are willing to run or three people that are willing to run um, because it doesn't have to take a lot of your time. It doesn't have to cost you any money. It just, it just takes your concern and your willingness to be involved. So, yes. Um, Two, another good stepping stone is like Park District, we have a foundation, yep. which is volunteers. You don't have to be elected. You, um, they meet once a month. 
Um, we are definitely looking for younger families. But I know the fire district has it. I believe the library has yes. it. So you don't Friends have to wait and to get elected. You can start volunteering now. And more information, you can go to our website. You guys can call us. But we're always looking for more people. Great point, Lee. That's right. There are. There's friends of the of the library and friends of the park and yes, and fire district uh, district foundation. Uh, here at the village, we have commissions. We've got plan commissions, police and fire commission, place things that you can get appointed to. Where maybe you don't want to run for office or you don't want to serve at that level, but you want to give back to your community. There's opportunities to do that. Um, it's only going to stay a great town if we all get involved. But we understand that you know. If you know you've got several kids and two jobs, I mean, maybe you can't do it. That's okay. That's okay. I mean, we get it. It's not for everybody, but everybody should at least find the time to be informed because you do pay a lot of money. I mean, this is a typical tax bill and it's over $10,000. Now, personally speaking, I think it's money well spent in this community. I think our taxing bodies do a great job, but it's still $10,000. So, how, what's happening with it? It's um, a lot of times elected officials will say, well, if there's nobody here, uh, we must be doing a great job. And in a lot of cases, that could be true. People might say, I've got no complaints. I'm just going to stay home. Well, okay. No, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's also good to know. It's also good to be involved, to be informed. So, okay. Any other questions from anyone? Yes, sir. So this might sound like a crazy question. No. Oh. Um, full of those types. <laughs> so as a voter, and you see these board members, yes, and they're nonpartisan. Yes. I mean, I could go into a voting booth and uh, see all these names. I don't know who anybody is. That's right. I don't know why they're running. That's right. If they're not affiliated with one party or the other. That's right. So the two-part question is. As a voter, mm -hmm. uh, how do we know? Mm -hmm. Why would we vote for any of these people that are running for a vote? Sure. And then the second question is, if you decide that you want to be involved, what is it, other than wanting to be a part of the community and being involved, what is it that you're specifically, uh, sort of, like for a better word, a platform, what are you communicating to the voters of New Lenox? That's, those are both great questions. So as we talked about the timeline, you will know at the end of December, you know, come January, who's running for office in April. So you've got that three months uh, period of time. And <clears throat> again, most, this is small town politics, if you will. Most people are very easily accessible, um, you know, whether it's on social media or you can call and say, hey, I'd like uh, this person to contact me. I've got some questions for them. Um, sometimes they do mailers and put out information or they have a website or they have their own f social media page where you can see what their platform is. But they're pretty easily accessible um, if you're willing to take the time. Uh, and if they're doing a good job, they will reach out to you through social media or however they, whatever their platform is or however they can get their platform to you uh, to say, here's why I'm running. Here uh, in the village, we have uh, on Channel 6, which does a great job. Uh, again, you have to have cable. I don't, you can't get it on the... the YouTube and Facebook, that's right, it's on the tube, it's not on the dish. But yeah, you get it on YouTube where we do, everyone who's running for local office might get a couple minute snippet to say, hi, I'm Tim Balderman, I'm running for because, and this is what I want to do. So you can go watch it on YouTube and, and you'll get that little three minute blurb about what um, that person stands for and why they're running. So there are those opportunities. There are um, always ways to reach out uh, to people uh, to do that. Um, uh, and it's their responsibility, to, if they want you to vote for them, to find a way to get to you as well. As far as what your platform is if you choose to run for office, that's, that's, an, that's your individual decision to make. So let's say you're interested in running for um, the park board. And you want to run for the park board because you think we need a community pool or you think we need a dog park or, or you want to see something different then that's your obligation to say, hey, I'm going to run for the board and, and here's why I'm going to run for it and here's what I think we should be accomplishing. What I would recommend to people first, though, 
is contact the park district director or contact someone at the village or contact someone at the schools and say, hey, how come we don't have this? You might find that they've already run through that whole thing and they can explain to you, look, here's why. We, we looked into it and here's why we can't or here's why it doesn't make sense. And you might say, you know what? There goes my platform. I, I, I mean, <laughs> well, but you might. But to be perfectly honest with you, the people that I love seeing get involved, and it's just personal, my own personal opinion, are not the ones that have an issue. They're the ones that say, I want to get involved because I love this town and I just happen to have a particular interest in the park district because I coach my kids' football team or something, or the libraries because I love the library programs, or the village because I want to be a part of what they're doing there, or education so critical to our kids. It's always better to have people run for office that are running because they want to, they're passionate about what they want to do. When you get one issue candidates, you're in big trouble. Be, I mean, because that issue is resolved one way or another pretty quickly, and then you have someone who doesn't have a passion anymore. So really, again, I can only speak for myself. I like to see people whose platform is, I love my town. When I ran for trustee in 2001, I moved here in 94. I went to the mayor at the time, and I didn't know him. I just said, can I meet with you? I said, I'm interested in running for village trustee. I like what's happening here. It's a great town. I want to be a part of it. Um, I asked my questions, and I ran. And fortunately or unfortunately, I was successful. And so, uh, but that's what I did. Um, but there are people who run because I'm angry about this and I'm running. Well, do you have a right to do that? But to me, I don't know that that necessarily serves the community. Does that answer kind of what you were asking? All right, thank you. Yes, Mark. Just as a side note, too, when the candidates are up, the local newspapers, the Patch and the Herald News, yes. also comes to us and gives us a questionnaire and fills it out. And you can see that both on social media and in the paper itself. That's right. So it does give you the picture of the person so you know who you're seeing because the candidates are very visible in the community. And it also gives you their platform and about them their families, right. their backgrounds, their work history. It gives you a lot more than just they're running for an yeah, office. I'm, I'm one of those people that I'm not on social media. Smart. And, uh, smart. Yeah, yeah. smart indeed. Uh, but, and but just so you know. The Patch is, is a newspaper, I take it? That the Herald News, though. Oh, and that oh. that but, but, either, but either way. To, but, but either way. So let's say that you uh, are... <laughs> again, my personal opinion, smart enough to stay away from that stuff because there's very little value. Um, it's really simple to, even if you wanted to, contact, in January, contact the schools. Can you please tell me who's running for office and can you let, could you let them know that I'm interested in speaking with them? If they don't call you back, I think that tells you something right away. Um, right? I mean, if they're not going to take the time to respond to a, a citizen, then I mean, what does that say to you? Uh, but so that's, if you don't read any newspaper, if you're not on social media, if you don't do any of that, still they will tell you, they, they, they tell you, here's the candidates that are on the, on the um, uh, ballot uh, for April. And you'll have months to be able to do that. And uh, again, good candidates will try and find a way uh, to answer everyone's question. R remember, in some of these, elections, I mean, you're talking about 2,000 votes, low voter turnout. You don't need to get out to a whole lot of people to get elected to a board. What I will tell you about this, if you're willing to put yourself up, and it doesn't matter if it's the library or, or the mayor or the park, it doesn't matter, be ready because you will encounter those people that just like to take shots from the peanut gallery, that never step up, that are never too will willing to give of their time, that never do anything constructive, but they're willing to criticize and take shots. And again, fortunately for us in this town, which is what I care about, we have enough good people that are willing to step up that are willing to serve in these positions, and because they do, we find, which is also unique to New Lenox, it doesn't happen in a lot of places, we all 
get along very well and work very well together and share services, parks and schools and library. We partner on things all the time because we are served by good people. And I guarantee you, you have people who are serving on these local boards that are far-right conservatives, far-left progressives, moderates, couldn't care less about politics or party, but when it comes to local service, they get along because they get the job done for their people. And that's what it's about. And I can tell you as mayor, and this frustrates some people, and I don't care, when I'm appointing someone to a position, I don't ask them what their personal politics is. I don't care. And I'm going to tell you that there are people in the last, in, in the last, my last term that I have appointed that I know are very conservative, identify as very conservative Republicans, and I know of a couple that identify as pretty progressive liberals. But I also know they're great people, and they love this town. And I couldn't care less who they vote for in November. I don't care. Don't bring it to me here. Talk to me about your neighbor that's having a problem, not about, you know, the border crisis. We're not solving that here in New Lenox. Go talk to your state representative, state senator about that. Go talk to your federal if you want to talk about the border crisis. Go talk to your congressman. Good luck. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's the shame of it. And that's the shame of it. I respect people's rights to believe what they want to believe, but I don't let it infiltrate what we're doing here. And I can tell you that I get criticized for that. I got criticized for that. I, some joker from another community who says, he's not a Republican, he just appointed someone that voted to pull the Democratic ballot. Oh, I don't care. First of all, I don't care what they say because they don't live here. but. I don't care about that. Care about your town, care about your community. That's what I want. Anything else? All right, thank you all for being here. Uh, residents, thank you for being here to take your time. I take out of your time. Um, I tried to make it convenient early on a Saturday so you can get on with your day and, and uh, I appreciate you being here. Um, to our, we have representatives from all of our boards that we talked about that are here. It just goes to show you we have good people. They didn't have to be here. We have good people that want to serve you. So thank you for your service. Thank you for what you do to make this such a great community. Really appreciate it. For those that will have an opportunity to watch this at home, uh, get involved. Get involved. And Don, thank you as always for what you do for Channel 6. And uh, we appreciate that. All right, everybody, we've got uh, the chalk walk happening outside from 9 to 2. Some great artists out there. Make sure you get an opportunity to check it out. And if you don't run for local office, uh, just stay involved and, and know what's happening in your community. You'll be much happier. Thank you. Thank you.